Up oh, there we go. Sorry guys, I thought I was live. So we're live official. Me and my boy Dreadlock Esco are in the studio working right now. So we're gonna be recording a hook today. Um, I thought I was live, so let me go back and get the whole introduction again. Thank you to whoever's tuned in. Make sure you guys hit that chat, say what's up. Today we're gonna be recording a hook on a new song that we just started. So um I hope you guys enjoy. We're gonna be sitting here chilling for a second until some people get in here. David, what's going on, bro? David Mixon, what's going on with you, man? We got two Davids here right now. <laughs> I got one. Got this one that worked. Just gotta click it twice sometimes. What's going on, Smelly Swelly V? What's going on, Haiti Pods? What's going on? I said smelly. My bad, swelly. My bad, swell. My bad, man. It looked like an M. I don't know why. He said I was waiting since two days, bro. I was on last night, but it was a little quick, and it wasn't really too much. I was just chatting with people and stuff like that and did a little bit of a mix. Um, But we are in here now. Me and my boy Dreadlock, we're going to be recording to a fresh track today. Um, He's going to be laying down a hook, and we're going to be going through the recording process to show you guys what it's like and we're at the home studio so you guys get to see even with the basic setup we're not using any analog gear we're not using a crazy microphone we're going to use this microphone right here so you guys are going to see how we're going to turn a $300 microphone into you know a great recording <laughs> he said this cool I heard it all <laughs> man my boy dreadlock came through with the baseball bat and this is halfway through see this is what my blunt's like length is when I light my blunt. This is halfway through his blunt, okay? This man and his cannons. I call him Derek Jeter of the of the rolling game. Cause that man be rolling baseball bats. Yeah, last night we were just chilling talking. I knew there wasn't going to be a lot of people joining because it was Valentine's Day. I know a lot of people got girls and, you know, relationships. So what's your top three mics to record on? Uh, I've been spoiled, so I'm not going to lie to you guys. My preferences are high, high quality microphones. So 251, uh, Sony C800G, um, U87, those are my top three. But those are like high, high end. Okay, we're going to talk like lower end. AKG C214, Aventone CV12, and the Slate VMR microphone, or VMS microphone. So, I do our, I do have a Slate VMS, but it's at, the, at our other studio. I gotta get it, so that way we can have both plugged up, and I can have him able to talk to you guys at the same time, and I can talk to you guys in between us doing takes and stuff like that a little bit easier. So... While we're recording, he will have the microphone. So if you guys have any questions, I'm going to answer you guys either later on or I'm going to answer you guys via text on here. So I'll, I'll sit in the chat and I'll type up to you guys my answers and anything like that. So be sure to ask any questions you guys want. If I don't get to them right away just because we're recording, it's a little bit different than when I'm mixing. Mixing, I can look over, stop for a little bit and keep going. I don't want to get him out of his flow. So the main thing I'm going to be doing right now is focusing on him and what we're trying to get out. Okay, so you guys are going to see me coach him. You guys are going to see me uh, try to help him develop what layers we need to do. Because right now, as of right now, we just know the words. We know how he's going to approach it as the lead vocal. But we don't know exactly what we're going to do with the uh, with the layers yet. We don't know harmony-wise what we're going to do because he is a, he's going to be a melodic artist on this one. So uh, we're going to just be really creative. So you guys are going to get to see that. <laughs> he said i'm using the w8000 which is the replica that's warm audio's replica for the people that don't know that's the warm audio replica of the sony state energy which is a ten thousand dollar microphone but the warm audio is like what 800 bucks so all right so first thing we're gonna do i'm gonna switch over to pro tools for you guys so you can see what i'm doing and so we can go from there <clears throat> um so all right let me switch over to pro tools there we go and so we're going to have, we got the beat right here. We got it already pretty much stemmed out. Uh, it's, it's only four layers or five layers right now, but we're going to add a little bit more later on probably after he lays his vocals. Um, so in here we have our Lindell channel, 
And then I'm also going to add a extressor because I know I definitely want that on him. And then, oh, it's 1400 Sorry. Okay, okay. Wow. They upped their price on that for sure. All right. So let me disable all these plugins because these are just kind of there to be there. And then we're going to move these up. Okay. So. Okay, so I'm just going to get these three things set because I know we're going to do these at least. And now we're going to go from there. All right, so when I mute my mic and I go over to him, you guys will hear Pro Tools, him coming through Pro Tools through the compression and everything. So you guys will hear exactly what I'm hearing through my headphones and everything. Um set these real quick see now every time I start a recording session everything is set back to zero we don't want anything on already activated like going crazy so those are good I can just keep the roll off on that that's fine all right you guys so I'm gonna let you guys hear the beat I'm gonna play it for you guys and uh, see what you guys think let me take all this stuff off know why all these are on i don't remember saving all these on my template but hey okay um headphones good to go let me switch this to headphones boom we're good okay and then output all right you guys about ready to show you guys All right, so here's the beat is what we're going to be recording to. Trap Beat Buffet, what's going on with you guys? Hey, listen, I got an artist in the studio, so if you guys got any fire beats, uh, very versatile artist. So we can go anything from dance hall to trap to, like, melodic, really soulful stuff. If you guys got any stuff like that, hit my email with some fire beats. It's my artist, Dreadlock Esco, right here. So... This is my artist. I'm his manager and producer, so I'm. We're really looking to branch out with different sounds and stuff like that. So, um, we're looking to work with any producers and anything like that. So, if you guys got some beats you want to send over our way to check out, definitely send them over our way. And trust me, I know shit ain't free, so don't worry about that. All right, here we go. I'm gonna play you guys the beat real quick. <laughs> So, all right, so while I record, I don't really have a mix on the beat too much. I just have the levels how they were when I made the beat. Um, but I do have a limiter on it just to make sure we're not going too loud and we're not maxing out our headroom. So we have it at negative 6 dB right now. Um, or actually, negative 5, I think. Negative 5. So 
but it's not super loud or anything. We just want to make it loud enough for the headphones. Um, and that also we need to put on here. Boom. All right. So, Dreadlock, I'm about to hand the mic over to you. And we're going to go from there. So, without further ado, you guys, give me one second. We're going to set Dreadlock up. And we're going to get him on the mic. We just need to get the key of this. This is in what? D flat minor. Okay. Low mal. Flex tune 15 or 20. I'll do 15 for now. That, that dummy dummy that you got lit up? You talking about? I use FL to make my beats and then I switch them over to Pro Tools if I want to mix them or if I want to add anything. Like I might add stuff in it, so I might just pull up VSTs in Pro Tools and do that. Hell yeah, sign some reggae tone, bro. We did. We have a song called On the Low. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Every time I do this, I have to restart Pro Tools, guys. Sorry. We have a song called On the Low I'll play for you guys. Um... This song right here, we we have, um, it's on YouTube. You guys can look up Dreadlock Esco on the low. But we have a music video and everything to it. It's one of our most popular songs. Yeah, send it on over. All right, we're restarting Pro Tools real quick. Some For some reason, every time I'm live, when I switch my uh, buffer size, from 1024 or 512 to 128, it goes like it can't read the AAE memory or whatever. I need that. <clears throat> you see the new ashtray, bro? Got Homer the stoner. You feel me? I got my boy Homer the stoner in front of me now. <laughs> Hey, shout out to Bronx, man. Shout out New York. I'm from Syracuse, so I always got to, you know, show love to my New Yorkers. Appreciate you guys tuning in. All right, so let me go back up. All right, so. Dreadlock, let me get this mic moved over to you. Let me make sure we got audio in here. So we got Harlem and Bronx and Syracuse in the near, in the uh, fucking building. That's what's up, man. Yeah, definitely. Swelly and David definitely link up, guys. That's why I do this, you guys. This is exactly why I do this. I'm trying to build a community where artists can find people close to them and link with each other and, and producers and artists and engineers and artists and just collaborate and work with one another and do business with one another. This is exactly why I'm doing this. It's not just for me to show off and be like, oh, look what I can do. You know, I'm really trying to educate you guys, trying to help you guys connect, trying to show you guys and help you guys learn from the mistakes that I made in my journey because, trust me, there's been a lot because I've been on this journey a long time and the game is changing forever, so I'm glad you guys are connecting on this. Damn, he's all the way from Af South Africa, man. We got somebody in here from some South Africa. Bro, you might really like that uh, On The Low song then. If you're from South Africa, you might really, really like that song. All the DJs, we went to a DJ summit, uh, and they all loved it. They were all like, yo, that's something I can hear overseas, overseas, overseas. Yeah. Step on up real quick, I 
just want to leave it up a little bit here. Straight towards the end. This is dope. The headphones are right here. Put those on you. Try to make it so you can see both of us. Excuse the camera moving. Hopefully you can see both of us. Let's see. I'm trying to make it dark. Yeah. Yeah, Dan's okay. Huh. Hold on. There we go. Right there. Cool. That's this looks perfect. Stupid. Boom. Perfecto. Perfecto. All right. Let me mute this mic. Not for you. All right. Let's get it. All right, guys, so uh, email dynastyonthemix at gmail.com. Any beats or anything like that. All right. Loops, anything like that, guys. All right, that's just a mic check. We're going to get levels real quick. Chico. This paper don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Time can get crazy if you out here slipping in the evening. Slide for no reason, cause it ain't no money in beefing. It's getting money season for the niggas who really out here eating. Make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason. Lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season because it ain't no money in beefing. For real. This should race it. I'll do it again. Oh, yeah, right. 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 Oh, you can just save it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So everybody, I, if you guys can hear me, I know it's kind of echoey, but uh, I keep every take by hitting control and slash, and then it creates a new playlist for me. So every take from the mic check on. All right, let's go ahead and get, I'm going to start you two bars away from the actual hook now. All right. That was pretty good. So remember, first half low, we'll do that, and then we'll punch you in the second. This paper don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. The times can get greasy if I hear slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, cause it ain't no money in beef. It's getting money. 
the season to be out here but they try to eat them. Get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. 
Don't sign for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. So now you're gonna say at that part, but say it loud like this. Yeah, for sure. Hold on, let me go live right quick for this little part. That's right. Blowing it down. Smoke without me. Yeah, we live in the studio. What you guys think so far? Let me see some uh let me Dread see some reactions down here. Let me get some of them hunted, them likes, them hearts, some shit you know like what I'm that. We on live trying to get it in. My boy going live on Instagram. Make sure you guys go follow him. Kid, what's happening with you? In the, what's good with you? I'm gonna put his name in the uh Chat. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this verse, spit this shit. You feel me? We live in the studio. For real. Follow him on all social medias. Right. Higher part. Can get greasy if you out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason. Lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. Yeah. Actually, no, just go along with it. I got an idea. I'm gonna start two bars back again. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Time's gonna get greasy. Yeah. Alright, we got the first line. Let's do this line by line. Huh. Get this right. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Time's gonna get greasy if yeah, you get I caught slipping in the evening. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get crazy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no. Times can get crazy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason. Lock in and focus on me. Times can get crazy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting more. If you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing for real. Now guys, I had him clipping a little bit in the system, but I wanted that. I wanted that saturation on it. Now it doesn't look like you're clipping, you're compressing it there, but that's what we're gonna do. Easy peasy. So what I'm going to do is this. For B. First pass. Make him tap it. Play it for the top. Let me hear how it sounds. I'm going to play it all up. So I got to use the mic. Don't come easy if you 
even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing, for real. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing for real. Hey, shout out Trap uh, Beat Buffet. Appreciate you guys tuning in all the way from Africa. Appreciate you guys a lot. Um, let me see. Yeah, his 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 live might be tripping sometimes. It does a weird speed thing. Um, but yeah. I just want to make sure you guys can hear me. But yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. Sometimes I've seen that too. I, even when I've gone on his live, it sounds faster. All right, so we're going to lay down some ad-libs real quick, and then he's going to get up out of here. We're going to do a little rough mix on the hook, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into another mix today. So here we go. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing for real. Beat is 119, my G. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. So, like, when you're doing, like, make it look easy. But, like, say it, like, nice and, like, smooth with it. Kind of like you're, like, more aggressive with it. You see what I'm saying? So, it'd be like... This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy. Do with the same melody and everything, but like keep that low tone for us. Alright, come on. This money 
don't come easy, even though I make it look easy, make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening, slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating, focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in B, no money in B. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy, make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening, slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating, focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beef, no money in beef. All right, everybody. Yeah. I'm going to do the whole stream on autotune now, and I'm going to sing everything that I'm teaching you guys. So first you want to... <laughs> shit all right let me get this reset up for you guys i know this sounds hilarious i'm on auto tune all right let me switch it over all right we should be back regular what you guys think about that uh yeah i cut out 70 hertz so on the um we can go ahead and break this down now, guys. So let me get my girl to come in here so I can roll up while we break this down because she's got to go to work soon. Hold on one second, guys. Let me just, I'll be right back. One second, guys. I apologize. All right, we are back. Hey, that's what's up, man. Shout out Africa being in the building, man. That's love right there. That's love. Y'all all, all the way across the fucking map and tuning in. Love that. What part? What part of Africa are you from? My church has a uh, a mission center in Senegal. And I was supposed to go to Ghana when I was like 12 or 13, but I didn't have my passport. So it didn't end up happening. But all right. So yeah, I had this vocal chain on him right here. So I had this guy doing some boosting at 12K, uh, 2.46 decibels. For this mic, it kind of needed that. I cut out some of the like kind of muddiness, about a decibel of that, and then a whole decibel of 200. So I rolled off quite a bit of low end. And then I cut it at 70. So yeah, I cut out quite a bit of low end from this. And then I compressed it with a four to one ratio with a fast uh, attack and a, a pretty quick recovery that this can do. And then I threw on an extressor, which was at three to one with a attack of like almost six and then release zero. So we had him coming in on some nice compression. So it's nice and controlled, as you can see. Um, we're going to go ahead and do something real quick. So I'm going to show you guys a little trick that I do. Uh, if you ever record something like these ad libs that I just recorded that are identical, right? And say, I was say I was thinking like, oh man, I should have had him do left and right instead of just doing um, this one layer. Well, because he did identicals. Let me show you guys. Hold on, sorry. Let me lower it a little bit. There we go. Okay, so. Because he did these identical, what I can do is I can go into here and go with this first one, chop this, and chop this last one too. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so I can chop that right there. All right, so now we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna pull him over to here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this. Oh, sorry, duplicate this to here. And now we have that same thing that we had, but this guy's gonna go on a solo. We're gonna make this left and right. So now these can be left and right without using the same 
line. I didn't take this line and pull it down. I used the second half, pulled it down, then duplicated them over. So this is this line again, and then this is the second line twice, but because they match up, it makes it a real double. So if you have somebody say something four times in a row and they say it the same exact way, you can chop that up and make four layers, a lead, a left and a right, and then another center, whatever you want to do. Or if you have them say it three times in a row, you could chop it up center, left, right. Uh, I like both. I mean, it depends. Like, it depends on how you want your auto pan to sound. Like, I also like Pan Man. And I also do my own automation for panning. So it depends. Depends on what I want to do. Do I want, like, a consistent back and forth? Do I want something that seems like it's going around you or behind you in a way? Um, and then I sometimes will do my own automation for the panning because I have way more control with that. If I want to make an actual word like and ah uh, and it like goes across your ears i can control that a lot better all right let me play this for you guys this money don't come easy even though i make it look easy Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening sleep. Don't slide for no reason. Lock in and focus on eating. Focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beef. No money. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening sleep. Don't slide for no reason. Lock in and focus on eating. Focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beef. No money for real. So like right now we don't have many plugins on them. I have auto tune and a little bit of EQ. You guys can see it's not doing much. Like these guys are, these are the dubs. So of course you got to duck out a lot more, but this is the verses or the hook leads. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason. Lock in and focus on eating. Focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beef. No money. This money don't. What school are you thinking about going to for uh, engineering, bro? And what makes you want to go to school instead of just trying to self learn? I'm truly curious. I, just so you know, I did not go to school for this. Now, don't get me wrong, there are parts of me that are like, damn. School is cool for this thing, but there's certain parts that it's not. Like, for instance, there's no guarantee that you will have hands-on stuff unless you are super dedicated to this stuff. Like, when you go to those schools, you have to book time for your projects and stuff like that. I'm still rolling it. You'll, you'll be good. I'm about, to, I'm about to roll it in two seconds. Don't worry about it. Everybody, my beautiful girlfriend. I don't know if you can see her on the camera. See her hand. <laughs> Soon we'll be doing a stream with her singing something because, yes, she is a singer. But trust me, engineering school is cool. Um, but it also can be not so beneficial if you don't go to the right school um, or if you don't push yourself super hard. He said, this is my school. Well, welcome to class. Oh really? Yeah, the dad. They're the having a, friend. yeah, they're having a, uh, they're having a welcome home baby party. Yeah. <laughs> My neighbors just had a baby. I didn't even know she was pregnant. Yeah, I seen her the other day. She was like rubbing her stomach and stuff. They were out Sunday. Mhm. Mm cleaning the car, so I'm wondering if they were trying to like fix their thing. Honestly, with this type of stuff, watching and then trying it yourself is one of the best ways to do it. Hands on. You can read as many books as you want. That's why I'm happy I started the way I did. I jumped into it without. Oh, Sudan and Chad. That's what's up, man. Um, but yeah, I didn't I didn't have engineers around me to teach me anything at first. So mine was like I learned all by error. You know, like if I fuck something up, I fucked it up. I just had to learn from it. And that was that was the process. Um now, you guys have YouTube, 
you guys have YouTube where you guys can literally look up. And you also have things like Mixed with the Masters. You have things like uh, Pensado's Place and stuff like that. There's so many different things you guys can watch that are from reputable people that can really teach you guys. Okay, SAE is not bad. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. My boy, one of my mentors went to SAE. Um, he landed an internship at Bad Boy Studios and became Diddy's engineer personal engineer for over 10 years. Now he's Little Wayne's personal engineer. So that is a great school, but you have to really apply yourself, bro. I'm going to tell you the truth. He said that he wouldn't have got where he went or where he got without putting in all the extra work that he did, like outside of class work and outside of stuff like that. He was booking studio time so that he could be working and working and working. And then when they offered an internship to him, he busted his ass 10 times harder at the internship. Hey, Trust me, bro. The, the thing about engineering is you can't rely on just learning at school. You got to learn everywhere. It's outside, inside, on your own, with other people, um, through YouTube, through all this stuff. But don't ever think that there's one way to do something. I show you guys my way, right? And and I can show you my other engineer friends who will show you their way, you know, and they achieve great results too. So there's not just one way. So like, um, for instance, uh, Dizzy, he's not in here right now. He's probably in a session, but Dizzy sent a mix in the other day that he was like, bro, I tried what you showed me, but you know, his mixing sounded great already. You know, it sounded super clean. And I was like, man, that sounds fucking good. Like I couldn't say anything really too bad about it or even critique it too much because you guys can develop your own, uh, techniques and skill sets. You can take my techniques and adapt them to your own ways. You know, that's why I do this, you know, because engineering is never just one way. That's why you hear from so many different engineers, oh, I use parallel compression. Well, I use this, and I don't use that, and I do use this, and I don't use that. Like, it, it just, there's no one way, so trust me. Learn from everybody you can. If they have good stuff that you like how it sounds, then learn from them. Try to replicate their sound. Try to replicate their techniques and see how you can turn it into your own. My template is Dave Pensado's template. Like the way I set up my stuff is how Dave Pensado sets his stuff up for the most part. And then I just kind of like worked around my own way. Exactly. Every artist you record differently, every artist you're going to, you know, they're, every artist is like, and even that same artist might come in one day and they want to record one way and the next day they want to record a different way. So you never have consistency in this. Like you never have like, oh, there's one way about doing this. That's why when you talk to other people about like opening a business for this, you can't really talk about like procedures because our standard procedure is not any standard procedure. It's It changes every day with the with the client. One artist I work with, they never want show mixes. They never want radio edits. Another artist I work with, they want radio edits, TikTok edits. They want, you know, like some artists I work with, they never want me to melodyne them. Other artists, they're like, bro, go crazy. Melodyne the shit out of me. There he is. We were just talking about him, and he shows up. Baby 8. There's an artist that I work with where... They will not let me do what I just did with Dread. Hey, do that line for line. Or, hey, do that. Nope, I'm recording it all the way through. Then there's an artist where they will not record it all the way through. So you can't have a standard procedure. You can't have a standard anything in this industry. You just got to learn to adapt consistently. Our job is to consistently adapt to what the creative needs. Our job is not to, as, oops, sorry, guys. Um, as the engineer, your job is technically not to even like tell them what to do it's listen to their vision what do you think i'm doing i'm trying to find a letter um you, your job is to listen to their vision and try to interpret that vision the best you can and make that vision come to life some people would be like i want to sound like i'm on clouds well motherfucker you better figure out what that means better ask them questions ask them to show you a song or two and get their definition Oh, yeah. That's huge. I don't know if you guys seen the shirt today. 
don't mess with the sound guy. I'll mute you. <laughs> Dizzy missed the recording part. He's going to have to go back and watch that. That's okay. If you guys missed the recording part, it will be up later. So you guys can go back and watch that. It was just a quick recording section of us recording this hook. But what's going on, everybody, today? How's everybody doing? Hope you guys are all having a great day. It is Thursday. It's almost the end of the week. He said, you thought you could go live without. <laughs> nah, bro, you're a moderator. You should get updates. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, I was going to say, I'm going to hit you when I'm done with this so we can get that Discord set up for this weekend. Um, and then, guys, tomorrow we are doing a live mix review. So anybody, anybody that has a beat that they mixed, a song that they mixed, Send it in, dynastyonthemix at gmail.com. It can be a YouTube link. It can be a SoundCloud link. It could be a Wave. It could be an MP3. I suggest Wave if you're going to send an audio file. I do suggest Wave. Um, but whatever you have, just send it through. We'll take it and we'll critique it one per person, though. I do not want to go through five or ten songs. I want to go through one per person. Um, and we're going to keep building this community by doing stuff like this. And uh, soon we'll be doing giveaways. We'll be doing, you know, we're, we're, I'm just trying to build the community. So once we get up to like, I think, I think once I hit a thousand subscribers, we'll do a giveaway. Um, and it'll be something really cool. Maybe a microphone, maybe, you know, some headphones, maybe a, a keyboard. I don't know. We'll do something really cool. Um, so we're going to do that. I'm going to have more artists on here streaming with me, doing recording, doing uh, just production sometimes, producers on here. Uh, working with me on production or even just chatting with me, you know, so there's gonna be some times where we're just doing a whole talk uh, Episode where we're just having a conversation and we're just, you know, basically Answering questions and having a conversation with that engineer about their journey um, And stuff like that. So we're gonna make this a fun channel Well, if you don't use Discord, make sure you get it because we are going to be doing some exclusive things on there, okay? So Discord is going to be for the exclusive options and the exclusive giveaways and exclusive uh, features. So you can be a regular follower or you can, you know, be a, be a diehard and get that into the Discord, you know? But we definitely want everybody in the Discord for sure. Um, it's not a matter of, you know, being ex excluded. But I know some people are like, I don't want to download another app. I understand. I've downloaded apps and forgot to use them too. Don't worry. It happens to the best of us. I need to send you a mix from two years ago or something and it was from two. Honestly, bro, I, I love listening to my old mixes because sometimes there was some creative fun stuff in those. But the quality is always going to be changing, right? Oh, you know why, Dizzy? Because I scheduled this one. I didn't just pop up live, so it might not have. It might not have just like told you instantly. I figured if I schedule it, it would let you guys know that there's something scheduled, though. That was the whole point of me scheduling it. But yeah, if you guys are new here, thank you for hopping in. Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, we're gonna jump back into this mix in a second. I'm just smoking and hanging out with you guys. Um, and waiting, you know, my girl's got to go to work soon. So I'm just smoking, hanging out with you guys and hanging out with her. So we're all just chilling here. So appreciate you guys chilling on this day. Um, what are you guys up to? I want to get a roll call. Where's everybody from? I got 13 or 11 people in here right now. So I know I got like five or six people chatting with me. So the other people that ain't chatting, at least say what's up. Give me a roll call. Say what's up. What's good with you? Even give me a yurt, whatever. Um, just let me know you're in here. He said Dynasty Way is now my go-to. Hey, love it, man. I got to put my light up in a sec. I'm letting it charge. It's almost done.
Well, we got the sunlight right now. I cannot wait for my panels to get done. Sick of this room the way it is. Stay in this damn. Stay. Alright, we're good. Alright. So, let me show you guys what we were working on today. So, this is a song that I produced. So, we're going to go through the stems. Uh, we're going to go through the vocals. And we're going to really break this one down. We're going to go through it. Go through it. So, let's mute the vocals for now. Let's break down the beat. All right. So, first thing I got is this guy right here. I used a little sample pack and just chopped this up. It was a long, long sample. Like this thing was a whole like two and a half minute sample. So I had a bunch of different sections to choose from. So I just kind of chose my favorite parts. Nice little dope like Spanish style, you know what I mean? Something different. And then I got this Spins 808, of course. Add in the snare. So that was the beat. So now, this is the hook. But they don't. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason. Lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Time. He said some real shit. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. It's a fact. So we're gonna clean up these vocals. It's 4.30 on the dot, babe, so you have like five minutes left. So we're gonna clean up these vocals. We're gonna clean up those vocals real quick. Get those little clicks and breaths out and all the extra stuff we don't need. Bella, chill out. My dog is going crazy. She hates sirens. We're going to line these up and stuff in a little bit. These are just clicks and breaths. We don't need them. So we're taking them completely out. So now we got the layers, okay? So we have left and right. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. 
This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing, for real. For real. And then we got the high layer. So the high layer comes in the second half. Season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't, don't come easy, easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. See. Now, to be honest with you guys, <clears throat> I was clipping in my uh input on this for a reason though I, I knew he was gonna get loud and i turned it up a little bit because i wanted that crunch but then i'm compressing it after now again is that wrong yeah people would say don't do that right but i like the sound it gave me i made him sound more aggressive and it's gonna make it poke out more but it's not like clipping to the point where it's destroyed the compressors on it and stuff kind of tamed it back and gave it a little bit better tone. So, I kind of controlled it back. Now, don't get me wrong. That is not the right way to record. That is a rule that I broke to get a good sound. Now, that's the same thing Mike Dean does. That's the same thing that people do all the time to get a unique sound is they break rules. So, don't always follow rules. Break them sometimes. Now, am I going to do every vocal like that? No, because then the whole song would sound super crunchy. But I want that vocal to sound like that. And then we have these little hook ad-libs. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beef. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing for real. Alright, so that's unedited or un you know unmixed. We just put some EQs on it. So we're gonna go ahead and actually mix that down today. So <laughs> He said I love my P's, B's, and T's. Bro. That is the worst when an artist, I had an artist one time write a verse that was like straight S, 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 and I was like, bro, what the fuck? This is going to be so hard to mix because there's so much s I'd be wondering if artists think about that. Like, you know what? All these S's together don't sound good. Um, whatever you want to do with the song. Personally, I like, I like the hook more layered than the verse because the hook is the more powerful part, right? The hook is the most biggest part. It's like the, the, the highest energy, the most, uh, loudest part. So usually with the hook, I want, cause watch when you go from this. This is very mellow. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times 
can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evenings. But now also watch, if I play this vocal by itself, it doesn't give it the same texture. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evenings. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. Now those doubles, we're not going to have those so loud. So if you know it's bright, then don't boost a lot. Do more cutting. The NT1A is, it's also depending on where you record the person. Like if, if the mic placement, I, I tell people this all the time. The mic placement is number one. If you move a microphone, it changes how it sounds. Okay, ready? Watch. Ready? I'm going to show you guys right now. So this is at my chest. It probably sounds way more bassy. Now that I'm talking like this and it's at my throat, it's st still the same, a little bit more mid-tone, right? But now that I'm at it like this, it probably sounds really nasally, okay? These are the three areas that you got to worry about. is your chest, your throat, and your nose because those areas can either sound too bassy, too nasally, or if you have a cardioid mic that's like a... a like your NT1A, right? You have the capsule, which is not surrounded by foam, so therefore it's more sensitive to air. So you're gonna have way more sensitivity on the top end. So if their voice is direct with the capsule, which is that gold thing in the center of your, your diaphragm of your mic, then you're gonna have a super bright and harsh vocal always. What you have to do is move the mic placement. Once you move the mic placement, the, uh, the harshness will go away a lot. You can either tilt the mic a little bit, you can, I'm sorry guys, I'm trying to find something. Um, you can either tilt the mic a little bit. You can lower the mic to their chest. If it's too harsh, you can get a little bit more bass by going to their chest. If you think it's too nasally, then same thing, you know, pull it or move back a little bit. Yeah, in solo, it became thin. By itself, it was a thin vocal. Now, we're going to thin it out again, the, the background vocals. We're not going to have those so loud. They're going to sound like more like a whisper. I want that type of tone from it, right? So, like, when I do a mix or when I record something, I'm thinking in my head, how am I going to blend this? How am I going to make this sound a bit more thin without having to do it in the recording phase? Now, because this mic is not a great mic to do distance stuff with, I had to keep them close to it. But if we were at the big studio... And we were at, with the Sony, I could add it back up six inches and it would have been fine. He could have whispered it. Then I wouldn't have got so much body. You guys got to understand that when a person moves on a microphone, like I just did right there, if I move to my left or right, it doesn't sound as thick. If I move back, it doesn't sound as thick. So proximity is a huge thing. When you're using a, any microphone, if they're too close to the mic, it's going to sound really thick. If you want thinner vocals, usually, you can tell them to back up. If you want thicker vocals, you can tell them to step forward. Mic placement is everything. This money don't come. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. It ain't no money in beef. This money don't come easy, even though I 
make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't stop for no reason. Lock in and focus on you. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on E. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beef. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason. For no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money, see. All right, so we're not gonna rely on one plugin to do all that. So there's a lot of mud in there, right? So we're not gonna rely on one plugin. We're gonna do a couple different things. So we're gonna reduce some mud with this. Get this falling real quick. Uh, I do that mic tilting stuff, but should I record with lower gain closer to the mic to eliminate room noise? Yes. I mean, definitely lower volume input will reduce room noise, definitely. But even just putting up a blanket behind you or putting it, like, for instance, my room doesn't catch too much open room stuff. Like, my room doesn't have treatment right now because I took it down because I'm in the process of redoing my uh, actual panels. I'm getting them built. So, I took down my treatment. And for the past month, I've had, well, two months, I've had no treatment in my room. So I've gotten used to it. But recording-wise, if I put the microphone, like, right up against the wall right here, it'll bounce really bad. I had him more in the center of the room behind me. And because my door is open behind me, and it's an open, like, my house is pretty wide open. So the sound went back there. It didn't bounce back into us. So I didn't have to worry about it bouncing back. That's why I don't have to worry about when I'm mixing. Like, I don't have to worry about it bouncing back to me. Sometimes I'll walk out of my room and go listen to it out there because it, it does have a different sound sometimes. But for the most part, there is a sweet spot in my room and because I'm eliminating back, like, bounce, I'm not getting as much reflection. So if you're in a room that's really open, put, them in, put your vocals in the center of the room. Like, as center of the room as you can go. Because anytime you're near a wall, it's going to bounce. Like, if I turn my head this way, it bounces really bad. Like, really bad. Like, this wall right here is super reflective, and I already know that. That's why when I, again, my speakers don't face the walls. I'm not turned this way, I'm not turned that way, and I'm not turned that way. I'm turned facing out my door, and my door's open. I don't cut 80 hertz when I record. Sometimes that's too much. If my, if my plug-in or my, my input cut only goes up to 80 then I'll, I'll cut something on like for instance see I have my virtual chain so this goes before it records so I'm cutting up to 70 but I'm not cutting up to 80 80 is usually a little too much I agree all right Uh, yeah, no, you can close it. Um, no, I don't use, I don't know if I have the roll off on this mic. I don't know what, I forgot what settings I put this on. Um, but usually I just try to do it on the preamp that I'm working with. So whatever preamp I have, that's what I'll do it with. That blunt is done. Now let's get back to the mix. All right, so when first thing we're going to do, of course, I'm going to tighten this damn mic stand. First thing we're going to do is we're going to mix the beat better because we can't touch the vocals properly until the beat is properly mixed.
the person's computer, bro. <clears throat> Don't let anybody fool you with FL Studio. You can do a lot of shit. Pro Tools is my go-to for a lot, but I will not let people shit on FL. FL is still a goat at production. Recording-wise, eh. Mixing-wise, eh. It can have some better things, but... Uh, what do we want to put on this? Let's do a channel strip. And a snare. I just want to get the snare a little bit more poppy. Now without my limit around, my beat is only hitting. Negative 9.3. So we still have a lot to pump. We can do a lot of stuff on this though. Like on this uh drum bus we can add some stuff if we wanted to we can do some more saturation um what we what do we want to play with today let's uh, um You know, I haven't used Heat Wave yet. What is Heat Wave?
is the pain I was saying about <coughs> licenses. All right, back to the regular program. So I mean, it, I don't do one compressor. So I do serial, I do serial compression. So basically, this one right here is compressing probably three decibels, sometimes four decibels, and then this one right here is touching one or two. And then if it gets really loud, then like higher. You know, it depends on like their standard. You know, like what their typical tone is going to be at. You don't want to be over compressing. And then when they get louder, you want to equal that back down to what their typical tone is. So. The thing about compression is you got to understand it's a controller, right? So if a person is rapping or singing and they have dynamics that are ex like they're accentuating certain words, dun -dun 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 right? And that's like an old school flow, whatever. But I'm just giving you guys examples of or even if someone's like da 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 da, like right. So those certain words da da the the little da. In between needs to go up a little bit more so that compression will bring it up so if you're doing compression right you're not going to be losing or feeling it you're going to be you're you're not going to be hearing it you're going to be feeling it okay and so you're you don't want to hear compression you want to feel that compression you want to feel that the vocal is steady but it also still has dynamics so for instance if i were to over compress these these wouldn't have spikes and drops and curves like these right here, okay? It wouldn't have this. It wouldn't be able to follow this curve, boom, 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 boom. It would be pretty flat. Like, I mean, literally, almost no dynamics at all. That's overcompressed. That's squished, okay? We don't want that, especially for lead vocals. Now, for the dubs after I mix, yeah, they can get squished. I'm going to compress the shit out of them. But... Um, when you want dynamic vocals, you don't want to over compress. So three to five dB when you're recording is fine. And then when you do more compression in the mix, that's when it really matters more. So if you don't feel like you're having enough compression on in the recording phase, don't crank up your, your threshold or anything like that to make it compress more because you can't take that back. So if you're controlling with three to five decibels of reduction and it still sounds a little too dynamic, throw on it. On a in the in the box compressor, so throw on something in your channel strip or on your uh, vocal bus, and let it be controlled in the box because then you can at least alternate it later on. Whereas if you over compress it with analog, you can't take that back. So you're better safe than sorry. That's why we always say like don't overdo it. Like when I even when I was just compressing him and equalizing him, I wasn't doing it a lot. Like this looks like it was a lot because I had his vocals pretty low but he wasn't coming in at zero he was coming in at negative four so i had to crank this down but now like his eqing i only cut like that's the biggest one right there is 1.78 oh no that's the biggest boost 2.46 but this mic is very very dull so i had to boost that um but i'm not doing dramatic things because i'm not in the mix phase i'm in the recording phase you don't want to do dramatic stuff even though it can sound pretty mixed as soon as you're done with it that means you have a great recording Because all these tools are, are really to fix things. These are to fix what's not properly recorded. These are If you have something that's amazingly recorded, then you might not have to add like those things that we're going to get from Cambridge and stuff like that. There's some stems on there where I promise you we're not going to have to do anything to them. We're just going to have to level it. No, no. Serial compression is like where I have – all right, so I have this compressor going. And this one's doing more work. And then I have another compressor right after it in my chain. So if I were to have this in analog, you know, terms. So I would go from my, at, at the at the studio I work with, okay, um, Bent String Studios where I work out of. We have, in Studio A, we have a um, 
Neve Shelford, which has a compressor on it, EQ on it, and it has a saturation uh, panel on it. So I can use all three of those, and then I run that into a 1176. And then from the 1176, I run that into Pro Tools. So I'm doing two levels of compression one after another but one is doing more than the other so like i said this guy right here this is emulating my neve right so here's my compressor this is going to be about three to five decibels of gain reduction and then this guy right here is catching anything that this didn't catch that's over what i really want it to be so like if i were to mute this i want to i want to mute this so you guys can see like See, that had three, and then that had one. And I'm going to do it again. Ready? I'm going to talk really loud. I just don't want to do it on the stream. So you can see right there. Uh, you can see right there. I was only compressing it like one or two decibels. Even when I was, I was getting loud. So like this is compressing five to six. This is still only hitting one. So I'm not doing a lot of work with this one, but this one's just doing a little bit. And um, El King, what's going on with you? You have overload VST? Yeah, I have overload. Um, which is more strong on vocal, Distressor or 1176? Um, depends. I mean, you can treat this. Distressor has 11, 1176 capabilities. This is why the Distressor is so loved, because you can treat it like LA-2A, like a, uh, like a 1176 and its own type of compressor. So... Um, that's one amazing thing about that. But personally, I think that the 1176 has a different sound because it's not a digital compressor. This, uh, the distressor is a digital compressor, so it doesn't sound the same as an 1176 or a Neve. Um, I think 1176 is definitely one of the most aggressive, but you have to choose the right version. Um, I always like the blueies. So even if you use the C CLA, uh, 76, and you go into the bluey. This version is more. See, look, I'm just talking into this, and it, same settings, right? Same settings. This one is not. Uh, this one's not going as hard, and I'm talking just as loud. So you can see that this one reacts way faster, way harder, and way more than the blacky. And that's the same settings. Those are the same exact settings. Three and four. So three and four, eighteen and thirty. Again, eighteen, thirty, three and four. So it depends on what module you're using, okay? When you use um, this guy, or say, for instance, I pull up another 1176, right? So let's do this, 1176. Um, okay, so check, check, check. Let's do this again. 30, 18, 3, 4. Right? Check, check, check. See? That one's not picking up as much. So every single one is different. I'd have to crank this up and go to here for it to be really getting anything. Okay? Which this is more like the realistic one, honestly. Um, this is more like the analog one. But then we have also our purple. Okay? So let's go into our purple. And see how reactive that one is. Okay, so again, 30, 18, 3, 4. All right, check, check, check. I'm not getting nothing, but I'm getting I'm getting a clear freaking clip. I'm not getting nothing else. So you can see that every single one is different, every single one. So this one doesn't start reacting until then, and so now we're good to go, and it's so you got to play with them, man. Like it, it, every single compressor is different, dude. I just used three different styles of 1176, and they are all different. All right, let's get back to this mix.
this session of recording and everyone be weird. The mixing job you're saying? That might be a cool idea. We're going to be open up a Discord uh, this weekend. So um, those type of ideas and stuff, we're going to have a specific tab for people to put for ideas for like the channel, for topics that I can cover, uh, questions that you guys want me to specifically do a video on or go live on. Um, so we're going to have all that. So we could definitely, you know, see what, see what people think on that. We're going to do votes on all that type of stuff too. Um, how do you set 1176 for hip hop vocals? I have that purple as well. So honestly, I like to use mine at a fast release and a medium attack at first, just to see how it sounds. If it's not giving me the sound I want, then I go into a way faster attack. Um, I usually use either a fast or medium attack with rap vocals, but there are some, if you guys know this little secret, there are some that you can open that have this little feature. So let me pull up, let me put this hook on real quick. And uh, let's pull up the hook lead. So right here, if I go into, let me think of who has it. Because I can't remember who has this feature. So there's a feature in one of them. There's a few features in a few of them. But so let me just pull up this one first. So there is one that you can use where if you crank this all the way, you click this. And it turns into a super, super, super fast attack. Um, and it's like amazing. But let's go ahead and do this with the bluey. Okay, so I'll use this one first and then we'll go into a different one. This money don't come easy, even though. This money. So you can already hear we're harsh as hell. So we're gonna pull this back. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason. So I don't like the tone of this one, but right there is about where I'd want it to compress. Okay. And I showed you guys at all the way at seven, the fastest that sounded horrible. Sounded too compressed on a squish. It was pulling all the nastiness out. Now, personally, I don't want to use that compressor. We're going to go ahead and find another one. So let's go into, let's do the purple. Since somebody said they had the purple. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. Now this one, this is a little different because this one isn't so reactive. So you have to really crank it up and you're going to get some really nasty tones out of this one if I do that with this vocal. So that's not the compressor you want to use either for this one. So we're going to find another one. See, and sometimes you got to go through different ones. But they all sound different. Um, which one did you say it was? The red E? Hey. Do I have that one? I don't. Damn it. Does it do it? Huh. 
Yeah, but yes, this guy right here, I've used the real version of this. So yeah, this one right here, it clicks, okay? Uh, there it is, boom. So if you put it on that click right there, boom, oh my God, that thing is amazing. Um, I might have to go buy that. But let's see, legacy. This one won't have it, but we also have the other yellow one, I believe. I believe I have two of them, but um, yeah. So we'll show both these. We'll do this one first. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason. Lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason. Lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season. thing i'm gonna do actually is take these guys and ds the shit out of them yeah i like the i like the way that that white one this sounds money don't come easy. because it's going to teach you guys a lot. I'm showing you guys a home recording, like just straight up with this microphone right here in this raw studio. Like we just ran, got together and just ran it. You know, we didn't, we didn't even practice the song or nothing. He just kind of thought of the hook the other night when I showed him the beat. So we're still going to get this. We're, we're dialing in this vocal a lot right now. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. Well, I have the Yamaha HS8s, and then I have my um, micro um, mix cubes, and then I have, uh, I'm also getting a new, so my boy creates custom monitors, 
and we had ordered a pair at the old studio I worked at, and then I had quit, so they kept the ladders and everything. But um, so I'm I'm in the process of getting a new pair that are gonna be custom built three way monitors, um, but they're gonna cost me like twelve hundred dollars or thirteen hundred dollars, and they have to be built. So they're being built custom for me. They're gonna be a custom color. They're gonna be uh, custom style and all that stuff. So. What do you mean do I use EQ after? So after I did this, this is this record bus can go bye-bye. So we're done with that. Um, but now what we're working with is EQ, and we're going to probably do another EQ, actually, to cut some more of that bass out. We're going to use a different EQ, though. Um, I really like this EOSIS EQ because it's kind of, like, really smooth. It's kind of subtle. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. No, it was. I just took all my stuff down because it was, it was, honestly, it smelled way too much like weed. <laughs> Because my old studio I had it in, they I had it in the booth and stuff like that. So those panels, people were smoking heavy in the booth. And it made it so that I really, really, really could not keep them in my house. Um, even though I smoked, like, they were, like, overly smelling, bro. It, every day, Even if I went on a trip and came back a week later and didn't smoke in my house, I would come back in the studio and smell like somebody just blew down a fucking, like, ounce in my studio. So I had to get rid of those. They were all ugly looking anyways all stained up from all the smoke that everybody had they were like a gray a light gray like a whitish gray cream color not not, not even cream color they became cream color because of all the fucking smoke they were coming brown because the last studio that i worked out of like it was no ventilation like they they built that shit horribly it wasn't their fault they didn't know anything about studios but this money don't come easy even though i make it look easy Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason. Lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason. Lock in and focus on eating. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Sounding better. So I'm waiting on, uh, I have, I think I have seven panels. No, so two, four, five. Yeah, I have seven panels coming right now. Um, They're being built. I had custom, uh, like, panels that were built for my room and then they're going to be hung in a way because I rent my house. So they're going to be hung in a way that I don't have to ruin the wall. So that's what I really wanted was something that I could hang easily and it had a custom uh, design to it. So it's not just like typical gray, white, uh, black, dark blue, stuff like that. I wanted a specific look for my stuff because i'm tired of buying all those fucking 500 dollars, 600 dollar packages and it looks like crap and they're only this big like they're like they're long and everything but they're only this wide so i wanted to get wider ones and taller ones so i'm gonna have two here one there one there two here and then one on this back wall and then possibly one on my door but this one right here has to be its own panel because this part of my room isn't a flat square it actually gets rounded right here so like it bounces off weird that's why right here it has one of the worst reflections this money don't come easy even though i make it look easy times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening don't slide for no reason lock in and focus on eating 
This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. Alright, so now we got the vocal a little more controlled. We can now go back to coloring the vocal. So we'll go back up to this guy. So we need to put some saturation on him. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. For me. Saturation and the EQ brought out a little bit more. Now let's see what the, the compression is doing now. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. Your sound. What up, my guy? Haiti. Uh, hat. What do you mean, Haiti? Like, you gotta explain that a little bit better. Sorry. I want to. I want to understand your question so I can explain it good to you. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and 
and then focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beef. And Hold on, in my, in my recording chain, I add a little bit of EQ, so I did have a little bit of EQ, but it's not dramatic. It's like literally like a decibel or two. Nothing crazy. Oh, no, I'm not I'm not done with Fat Filter. I just, bro, I have so many different plugins, bro. I use a bunch for different things, bro. So, you know, there's different reasons for me using, like, this guy right here. I love the fact that it follows. So, like, I can put this on track, and it's going to track the frequency. So, it's going to bounce around with it. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. So what that does is that finds the part that's like the muddiest or the most harsh, whatever it is. And you can do it on different areas. And uh, that will make it follow because it's not always consistent. So sometimes you might have four different EQs doing a dynamic EQ where you could just have one on this one and it's following it around. So that's the cool part about this EQ that I love. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This, this money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. For no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't try for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. See, so that just followed that area. Yeah, I have all the slate plugins. Money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. This money don't come. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. This season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look. No, digital compressors don't sound different. They just have different functions. So this one having the different functions of, first of all, you have your, um, there's a balance thing that you have in here that you can do. Hold on. So this little X right here, I can pull the balance to be more of a <coughs> bass balance or a high balance. And so that tilts the um, the frequencies a little bit more. So if I wanted to actually just cut out more bass, see what I'm doing right there? I just cut out way more bass and boosted way more high. So if I were to play this. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. And then, I mean, like, the same thing with Fab Filter EQ. It's the same thing. It's just a digital EQ. Um, now, as far as things sounding different from this guy compared to this guy, yes, these have a different sound. Um, same thing with this guy, that guy compared to this guy you know 
these all have different sounds right here. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't fly for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't fly for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't fly for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't fly for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in Slipping in the evening. Don't fly for no reason. Lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. So I came multimedia plugins, alright. I just haven't used a lot of them. Um, I have some, but like, let me see, where are they? Did I even install them on this one? I mean, I have my contact plugins, but um, I don't think I, I don't think I even, no, I didn't, I didn't install my T-Rack stuff and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they're, they're a decent company. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't fly for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if we out here slipping in the evening. Don't fly for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. Even though I make it look easy Times can get greasy If we out here slipping in the evening Don't fly for no reason Lock in and focus on eating It's getting money season Cause it ain't no money in beefing Bro, I don't even know how many times it allows you guys to like the video. Uh, how long did it take before you get good mixes? It took me about four years, five years before I got good mixes. Before I got great mixes, that was like seven years, you know. But I was a gradual learner because I was learning by my own mistakes, okay? So this is what I'm trying to show you guys is, look, I gradually produced or gradually progressed. Because I was not around engineers. I was not around people that knew what they were doing. I was around rappers and people that just knew how to like hit record and make it, you know, sound loud. That's all. And it didn't sound good. So for me, it was I had to learn by doing a bunch of mistakes. And then when I finally got around other engineers and I finally got around people that were in different genres and stuff, I learned a lot more and I grew a lot faster. But my ear still had to take time to develop. The biggest thing was when, you, when you're when you learning to mix, it's not about learning the tools. Learning the tools is only like 10% of it because an EQ is an EQ, okay? I don't give a shit if it's an API or a fab filter. It's an EQ. It's an equalizer, right? What do they do? They cut or boost frequencies. That's all they do, 
okay? A compressor. I don't care if it's a, a stock Pro Tools compressor or a stock Logic compressor or a stock FL Studio compressor or an 1176. What do they do? They compress audio, the dynamics, they control the dynamics better, okay? So these tools, they're all the same. But the thing is, developing your ear to understand when and how to use the tools is what is the real game changer. When you start understanding before you even touch a tool, you go, okay, like a person who, think of a mechanic, right? If they have an engine issue, right, what do they say? Like the first thing they do is, okay, well, because this engine, need, or let's just make it even simpler. Say a person needs to have their tire fixed. Simple as hell, right? What's the first thing you should have to do? Take the nut, the lug nuts off the, the tire, pull the tire off, take the tire out. And honestly, if you have a rim, they have to swap the whole tire, but you can always just take boom and be good. Okay. But other people, they have nice custom rims. They got to actually put a whole tire on there. So they have a whole process for that. They don't sit there and go, mm, maybe we'll try the, the, we'll try to use the drill today. No, there's a specific way to use. They know what tools they're going to go to. Okay. We need to change the tire. We need to use this tool. We need to take off a lug nut. We need to use this tool. We need to tighten this. We need to use this tool. We need to, we need to hit a uh, now we need to use this tool, right? It's the same thing for engineering. I need to carve out frequencies that are harsh or annoying or boost something. I'm going to use equalizers. If I need to control the dynamics of something, I'm going to use compressors or limiters. So before you jump into like, I need to know everything about the tools, like learn to develop your ears and when you need to use those tools and you'll be able to attack things way better. Like right now, I haven't moved on from this lead vocal for a reason because it is not sounding the way I wanted it to. And it, again, this I did this for a reason with you guys because it's a home recording. I didn't go crazy about like doing any uh, like crazy carving out before he recorded. I wanted some harshness so that way I could show you guys because I know a lot of you guys are recording and using gear that doesn't always sound the best right away. So I'm showing you there are ways to get it. Now, are we exactly where we want to be with this? No, but we're going to get there. Even though I make it look easy Times can get greasy If you're out here slipping in the evening Don't slide for no reason Lock in and focus on eating It's getting money season Cause it ain't no money in beefing This money don't come easy Even though I make it look easy because they're not real engineers they've never worked with clients they've never they got on youtube and learned a couple things and then started making videos for you guys to watch so they can make money off of youtube i get paid to do what i do i make money off of engineering like i just got booked for 10 mixes yesterday so these people don't know what it's like when they talk on youtube most of the time or they don't want to give you too much information because they want you to hire them Jay Huss, appreciate you, man. <clears throat> so, just to let you guys know, you know, there are a bunch of freaking dumbass people out there that like to go and watch a video, then just regurgitate the damn information that they just found and not even know how to use that information in a real life situation. Me, I've set up studios. I literally had to set up my whole studio at Bent String Studios a couple of months ago because nobody at that studio knew how to set up a patch bay. Nobody knew how to rewire things so that that way you could run it into the interface and be able to run audio back out into the patch bay and into whatever gear you want. I had to do all that stuff. And 
I'm not saying that to like shit on anybody. I'm saying that that's like when you know what you're doing, you know what you're doing. <laughs> and a lot of people don't know what they're doing. They will go and let me watch this YouTube video on how to do compression. Watch it three times and go, okay, I'm going to make a video myself. Boom. Go and make the same video. Just because, guess what? They're going to make money. They're going to try and make money. Off it. Damn, Ted Nixon's how you going to deliver that? By doing them, bro. That's what I do. <laughs> That's not a lot of mixes, bro. That's a week worth. In a typical week, bro, I mix three songs a day, so within six days, that's 18 songs. So 10 songs, that should take me only about... Usually, I, I try to do two to three songs a day, depending on how difficult the song was or how frustrating the song was, because sometimes you get songs that are so damn frustrating, it's like... Ugh. I don't know if I really want to work on this much more because I'm getting frustrated and not making progressive moves towards it. Oh, I'm about to for real, for real have them mad. I call any engineer out that, I mean, like, literally, like, I will call anybody out that thinks they know their shit because they've been doing it for two years and got lucky and got a placement. Like, bro, so many do, so I, I've literally been sent sessions from people like Trippy Red's engineer, and the shit was so amateur, and I was like, how did this guy get hired? But that's the industry for you. Especially the rap industry. Pop artists, different. Country artists, different. Rap artists, they don't give a shit. If you can get it recorded, they're going to record it with you. Oh, no, 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 no. Hell no. Mix and master this in the same day, no. How do I know when the mix is done? I feel it. And honestly, when I... Feel like i'm overdoing something i will take a day or two off from the mix and i'll tell the artist here i'm gonna send you what i got if you you know let me know what you think give me your revisions take a listen for a day or two and then from there i listen it again and i go okay what do i need to change or whatever but for the most part i can feel when a mix is done if i feel like i'm overdoing something then i'm like all right this mix is probably done let me listen through real quick let me send it to the artist see if they like it that's the number one thing make sure the artist likes it because i've done mixes where i'm like oh this shit is done and I send it to the artist, and they're like, eh, let's do this, 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 this. And they got a list of, like, 50 things. And I'm like, okay, so it's not done. So I don't give myself false alarms. I tell myself, I think this is good. Let me send this to the artist and see what they think. And then from there, if it's, hey, wow, that sounds amazing. That's that's all set. Okay, I'll master it now. I don't send the master until I get the uh, okay of the mix. So you got to get a green light on the mix. Done. Okay. Mastering time. Master, send it, send the different versions, send that. Good to go. Hey, got his Apollo yesterday. That's what's up. Make sure you register your plugins, bro, and you install your plugins. But look, I'm going to teach you something. So when you install your uh, Universal Audio stuff, bro, when you install the drivers, it's going to automatically install your plugins for you. But it's going to install every single audio plugin that Universal Audio has. So that ha whatever you got usually comes with like six or 12 plugins, whatever. Um, you can go into your plugin list in your programs, uh, in your like program folder and delete the ones out that you don't have and then they won't show up in Pro Tools. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at shit like this where like if I go in my Universal Audio, which I do not own all these plugins, it shows all of them. I have to go in and take all this shit out because it's, it's annoying me. Michelangelo Tube EQ by Tone Projects? I might have to look that up. The hell is that? Uh, what is it called? Tube EQ? Oh, Michelangelo. Oh, what is this guy? Hmm. 
looks kind of like a guitar amp. With Hendy amps, so. Yeah, it looks like a guitar amp more. What other things do they have? Let's see. Baseline. I've never even heard of these guys. See, there's so many plug-in companies now, guys. Like, there's so many companies. Back, yeah, those, those are all the songs right there. Back when, uh, here, we're going to go ahead and, um, I'm going to download those, actually. So while we're talking, let me switch this over. Because I need to get those downloaded. Podcast mode. Oh, shit. It's dark in here. Let me switch this. This is charging up. I think it is. Yep. Cool. Thanks. All right, guys, pardon me for one second. Bach. Huh. Well, that's dope. That's pretty dope. All right. So we got this better. Let me go ahead and download these songs real quick so I can make sure I have all of them. So we might start working on one of them today. What do you guys think about the hook, though? The hook that we've been working on? What do you guys think about that so far? Did you guys, whoever was in here that seen the recording session, what did you guys think about that? Did you guys like the recording session? You want to see more of those? Yeah, man, I'm actually getting my website reset up soon. Um, I can send you the purchase link for my templates, but um, the website is down right now. So, Yeah, I got you. Just play it through. Jump into Pro Tools. And play it through with all the layers and everything, okay? So you guys will hear everything all together. Now, this is not fully edited, so we're still working on it. Rough in the mix. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if they out here slipping in the evening. Don't fly for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beef. This money don't come easy, even though I make it look easy. Times can get greasy if you're out here slipping in the evening. Don't slide for no reason, lock in and focus on eating. It's getting money season, cause it ain't no money in beefing. For real.
God damn it. My damn uh, shortcut stopped working. So hold on one second, guys. I got to restart my OBS. I'll be right back. You guys will see everything fine in a second. Hold on. All right, we're back. Sorry about that, guys. Florida shit is downloaded. Run laps. Why are you breathing? And trust the hype. All right, so those are all of the songs. Let me make sure they're all downloaded. But yeah, so that's my bro, Dreadlock Esco. Um, you guys can check out his other music that we have on all platforms. Uh, I tagged him in the uh, information. So if you tag or if you click on the info about this live, it'll have his social media and all that stuff in there. Make sure these are downloading. Again, whoever's in here, I truly appreciate you guys hanging out with me, chilling, vibing, learning, and uh, connecting with one another. Make sure you guys introduce yourselves in the chat and uh, let people know what you do. If you're an artist, let people know. If you're a producer, let people know. If you're a songwriter, you know, pro uh, engineer, whatever you specialize in, put it in the chat. Let people know because you never know. People might want to link with you. People might check out your stuff. I mean, shit, Swelly and, um, who was it? Swelly and Mike, I think, are in the same city or same, same, yeah, same state, almost the same city, pretty much, New York City. So, you know, trying to make sure everybody can connect with one another and grow with one another. Shit, you never know who you're going to make a hit with. You never know. Yes, Dizzy is my assistant. He is also the moderator. <coughs> all right, I need to make sure these are all downloaded. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need two more. So I need it is done. In my family is done. She likes done. Paint on me. Done. Hundred shots. Done. Friend like me. I don't see that one. Okay. Run laps while you're breathing. Well, this is, all right, so trust the hoe and friend like me. All right. Uh, if you send it through Google, just that, send it through a Google Drive file, bro. No, you cannot fix everyone. And yes, there are some people who do not sound good. It's just part of the process. Um, I coach a lot of people. Like a lot of times if somebody's not sounding good, I will coach them into getting them to at least where they're decent. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Some people think that they're going to come into a studio and lay down a song in 15 minutes and be done literally just that quick. It can happen. Don't get me wrong. But for most people, if it's their first couple times or they're not really an experienced artist, it doesn't happen like that. Um, a lot of people, especially if they're trying new stuff, you gotta let them, uh, you gotta let them try to find their comfort zone. And so, to me, recording is the most important part about making a song rather than the mixing side, because th the recording is the capturing the magic. So when you're recording, you're capturing what that artist is expressing. When you're mixing, you're kind of polishing that. You know, you're not really or you're trying to emphasize certain things about the magic. But when you're recording, you are capturing that magic, just like a person taking the video of something. That person is more important than the editor, because if they don't catch the right moments, the editing is not going to be good. So you got to catch the perfect moments. You got to pay attention to the artist. That's why, like I tell people all the time, like if you're a new engineer, like my interns don't talk to anybody in my sessions. I don't give a shit if somebody asks you a question, Tom, sir, I can't talk to you. 
ma'am, I can't talk to you. I'm working. I'm learning. I'm here to learn. I'm sorry. If they need assistance, that's different. But if they're like, hey, bro, where are you from? Hey, bro, what do you? No, no, no. Sorry, I, I can't talk right now. I'm paying attention to learn. If, you, if there's anything you need, like me to go grab you something, I can go do that. But I can't sit here and have a conversation with you. Because when you are in that engineer seat, the only person that matters in that studio, unless you have a producer next to you, is the artist that's in that booth. That's the only person that matters. Okay. I had a whole situation where these kids went out the studio, ended up uh, almost getting robbed, pulled a gun on somebody. I didn't know none of that shit happened because I was so focused on the artist. And when they came in and everything, I didn't even realize what type of conversation they were having. I was so focused on the artist. All of a sudden, the cops show up, and they're like, I'm like, what? Uh, I have no clue what happened because I was really so focused on the artist. That's how focused you got to be. But, you know, like that's that's really the mindset that I was taught is like if you're not focusing on the artist and making sure that you're bringing the best out of them and capturing that in the recording process, no matter how good your mixer is, they're not going to be able to give you a great mix. You can't polish a turd. A turd is a turd no matter how much you polish it. Now, don't get me wrong. You can definitely mask some people with some things like autotune and melodyne and whatever. But if somebody just sounds boring, then no. If somebody raps on a beat like, I've been trying to do this for a while now, but I'm... Dun, 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 dun. No. But if, I've been trying to do this for a while. Now. That's energy, right? So you're going to feel that more. That'll be easier to mix than a, I've been trying to do this for a while now. And now I'm, right? That's That's what I mean. So when you guys take the recording side not so seriously and you just worry about the mixing... Well, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice because as an engineer, you should care about both sides. And you don't get to being a mixing engineer without going through the recording engineer phase. You don't. You have to be a recording engineer. You have to learn how to record. You have to learn how structurally a song works. You have to learn structurally where, where things go as, a, as, as like um, soundscaping, you know, like where you're building the blocks to, to stand in the mix. That's where you learn it is in the recording phase. Because you're seeing where everything is placed. You become a better mixer when you record it also sometimes. Like, don't get me wrong. It does become a pain because you're more subjective to like, oh, well, this already sounds good because I record it. But at the end of the day, you are learning a lot more in that process. And I'll tell you right now, if I would have just jumped into mixing, I wouldn't be where I am. I learned a lot of the stuff that I learned before I even recorded somebody. I learned it doing music. I've been in bands. I've been playing with live musicians my whole life. So I have musicianship behind me where, like, I understand tone. I understand timber. I understand the the different types of uh, harmonies that people can do. I understand the different uh, even terminology from music, like, class and music school you know, because I did go to band. I did band my whole life. I played in um my church band. I played in a lot of things. So for me, I have a lot of experience behind the music scene and not just in the technical side. So get more well-versed with music, people, and actually learning from those people because even a guitarist can teach you something. If, if you hang out with a guitarist and you ask them how they get killer tones in their guitar, don't you think you could do that in the program? It's the same thing. If I hang around somebody that's been playing guitar for 40 years and I ask them, wow, how'd you get that amp to sound that way? I can literally take their settings and go put it in my fucking amp on this program and it'll probably sound the same. That's the one thing I will say. Guitars, pianos, stuff like that, you can always take their settings. You can always take their settings. As long as you can play a little like them and you can get the the the, the uh, actual articulation out of the strings and stuff like that like them, then you can definitely get the amp to sound like them. Now, vocalist, that's a different story. Like, you don't learn engineering just by being around engineers. You learn engineering and music by being around musicians. What are your best tips for home recording artists that have no recording engineers? Um, One, just learn the basics as much as you can. The basics of sound quality, the basics of gain staging, the basics of equalizing, the basics of compression, the basics of reverb, the basics of uh, balancing, you know, that's really all you need to worry about. Because once you get that, you send it off to an engineer, let them mix it. 
if you can record it and make it sound good just like that, then the engineer can emphasize things. Now, when you're recording, you guys got to learn the fundamentals. So the fundamentals are things you cannot skip over. You have to learn about mic placement. You have to learn about uh, your computer. Honestly, you have to learn about processing and uh, RAM and making sure you have the right stuff for that because if you have a crap computer, you have a crap processor, you're not going to have a computer that can do the things you want it to do and you're always going to be frustrated because you can't do things. Um, and then the other thing is understanding like input volume and vocal chains. So if you have, and I'm not talking about analog or anything like that. I'm not talking about anything that's crazy. You could literally just put plugins on your record track and that's your vocal chain, right? So if they have, um, like for instance, autotune, they need to understand keys, keys and scales. So not understanding full music theory, but understanding that you can't just slap a beat on and put it in the key of E just because you feel like you're singing in the key of E. You have to put it in the key that the beat is in. So if the beat is in F sharp minor, you have to put the, the key of the song in F sharp minor. So for instance, this beat we're working on right now is in the key of C sharp minor. So I can put that in either C sharp minor or I can put it in, uh, where is it? Yeah, so D flat. So I can do it in D flat minor or E major. Those are the two. So you have those options. Okay. Now, that's understanding a little bit more of music theory, but understanding that will help you a lot, especially if you're an auditor artist or a singer. Um, but yeah, that was a great question because those are very important things that people skip over. Uh, and I mean, yeah, understanding the program, understanding you know the 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 simple little stuff about that, but. If you get a template that you can record on and you understand what a compressor does, you understand what an equalizer does and reverb, you can get a pretty good mix or a little like rough mix, rough recording and send it off. So I would say focus on those things. And then this, the third thing also is focus on your, don't just focus on the technical side, focus on you as an artist, your vocals, how you're performing. Your performance is everything. So just because you have a microphone in front of you and you're rapping doesn't mean it's going to catch it the way that you think it's going to. I had a dude the other day who was like, Yo, I want my voice to sound like this Tory Lanez song. And he showed me the song, and Tory Lanez is in this loud ass, like, ah, da, 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 right? Like, loud. Where his rap was like, I've been at it, boom, man, and I was like, bro, I can't give you that sound. That's not the sound he recorded like, so I can't give you that sound that he's getting because those are the plugins reacting to him performing it like that. So, yeah, I can throw auto tune on you. He has auto tune on him. I can throw reverb on you. He has reverb on him. I can probably find the same reverb preset, but it's not going to sound the same because you're not hitting the same tone. So, understand your tone, how you perform. That's very, very important. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Take your plugins off, especially if you're not really well versed with plugins. Because I've had times where people sent me their vocals and they they printed all the plugins onto it, right? And like they cut all the good stuff out of their vocal, like from the low end. They put way too much reverb on it, way too much compression. I can't take that stuff back. So once that's glued on your vocals, yeah, I do always suggest give me the raw and then give me your rough mix. And then if you have Pro Tools, send me the Pro Tools session because that way I will have the plugins on if I need to correct the plugins and you want me to keep a certain thing or I can try to recreate a sound. But for the most part, a lot of home engineers I do or home recording artists, I do just tell them, don't even worry about giving yourself a crazy mix. Just make it sound good for yourself and then send me it and give me your tell me your vision, you know. That's actually what I'm going to be doing on these next 10. I think he recorded them either with himself or with another engineer. And I'm just going to be pretty much turning those into what he wanted. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Push it in. You get shit out. I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> nah, for real. Definitely, definitely. Um, and yeah, definitely send it off to a mix engineer. Trying to do all the mixing yourself, it'll slow you down, to be honest with you. Um, does auto-tune work, work fine even if sound... All right, so does auto-tune work fine even if the artist sounds really good already singing in the notes? Yeah, I mean, auto-tune, that's when it's supposed to sound the best. I will show you singers in a second. He's actually a note. He's very a note. 
Let me go and show you guys this. This guy is Dread is a soulful singer. He's not like a, a like a very R and B singer, but he's got he does hit notes on point. So I'm gonna show you guys. He's very on note with a lot of these, and you will see. And this is before I even touched it. I'm going to show you guys the melody before I even touched it. Let me pull up my screen so you guys can see. All right. Transition. Boom. All right. So in these parts right here, he was very on key with these. Like these right here, these high notes, boom, boom. He was on note quite a bit. Okay. Now, not perfectly. But he was definitely more on note. So because he's close to the note, it's going to definitely tune it a little bit better. Now, th that's the whole point of me melodining is because when I melodine something, it makes it closer to the note. So it makes the melodine or the auto tune more clean. Now, if they're off note, it makes it more glitchy. OK, um, it, but when they're singing clean, I usually just turn this like 43 percent, 50 percent, turn up the flex tune to 25 and then even turn up the humanize sometimes like 20, 25 uh, just because. You might just need to catch a little flatness here or there that's going to go. Uh, on my master track, I don't have any on right now. Oh, I have these on, but I guess. So, okay. Let me take off the ozone because I don't need that on there. That's not something I put on. That's just on there because I had it. All right, let me turn that back off. All right, so first I have a bus compressor, which is going to do some compression around 2 to 3 decibels um, just to glue it together. Then I have an EQ doing mid-side stuff. And so this side over here on the right side are the side information. The left side right here is the mid information. So I can uh, choose to solo the sides and, and dial in or cut out or boost frequencies in the sides to make things poke out more or maybe tuck in a little bit more in the final part of the mix. And then I shape some of the mids also to make the vocals poke out just a little bit more. So I usually boost around 700 or 500 hertz depending on where it sounds the best. Um, and I do that with a nice little wide scoop right here and then a nice bell. And then I go ahead and I boost sometimes again. This is around 700 hertz again. So I don't know what the hell mix this was from, but yeah, I go ahead and boost stuff usually uh, with the mid side. Sometimes I'll chop out some of the high so it's not so harsh. Then I throw on the Vitalizer, which is a saturation plugin. It's got a stereo expansion on it, and then it has this nice little, like, I don't really know how to explain it. Like, this high tune and this low LC EQ, like, these things are, like, they are kind of like EQs, but they're not. I don't know how to describe them, but um, they add brightness and, and depth to the mix. And then also this bass right here. You can make bass sound really, like, really, really fat or really tight. And then uh, after that, I go into a saturator. So this guy is doing some saturation. I can do two different uh, levels of harmonic. So second harmonic, fat crusher, and then third harmonic. So the third harmonic I do to the sides most of the time. And then the second I sometimes do left and right or I'll do mid and I'll go to the low end. So it bumps up that 808 a little bit more and hits the kick a little bit more. Oh, yeah, I can show you guys a session right now. So this is a song that I produced. I'll show you guys right now. There's no auto tune on this girl. Exactly. I wouldn't be, trust me, bro. I wouldn't be live if I didn't want to answer questions, bro. <laughs> I don't understand why people go live and then don't talk. Like, that's the whole point of going live is to have interactions. You know, if I wanted to mix privately, I'd be sitting here not live and just banging out mixes, you know. Um, today's just, I don't have a deadline for anything right now. So I'm not really in a rush with anything. So I'm just kind of chatting with you guys. 
making things work. All right, let me get this pro tool. Let me make sure we're not capping. Okay, I have I have some, but no. Let me show you guys what it's at though, because <laughs> this is this is what I mean. This girl's singing so good. If I take, I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna show you guys right now. So, I produced this song right here. This is one of the artists that I work with. Her name is Michaela. Let me show you guys. So, I capped a little bit. There is auto tune on her, but it's like I said. It's exactly like I said. Ready? So, as you can see, there's auto tune on her. But actually, no. Her lead vocal, there's not. These backgrounds, there's not. Just on these, there is. So, on the dubs, see, retune speed, 81. Flex tune, 69. Humanize, 68. That is crazy. All right. So, that's not even like you. That's not even audible. These guys right here are just extra little things that we did. Don't need it. So, all right. I'm going to show you guys a couple things. All right. Let me break this down. So, I made this beat for her. This is the beat right here. Let me go ahead and unfreeze these plugins. Let me make sure we're playing. Not this one. All right, so let me show you guys something. So I played this on the piano for her. Um, we got. But then we went in and we did this. So she was humming this when I was playing it. She was like, here, I want to add these somewhere. And she was doing these. Sorry guys, where are my vocal effects? So what I did was I added Alter Boy, which made it into this. We blended it so it's not 100% that. It's it's mixed between the real vocal and that harmony. Then I threw on Multipass, throw on Bit Crush on the middle, and then I threw a Pitch Shifter on the high end, and I threw it up 12. And then we took a mag EQ, cut out a lot of stuff. Oh, boosted a lot actually in the mids and lows. Take away from that harshness. Then we threw on a doubler. Then we threw on vintage verb with a 51% mix. And then we threw on this EQ to cut out a lot of those frequencies. But that turned into this. I just 
Just hope my luck doesn't run out I'm realizing Drug my name through the dirt yeah. To find my heart Then watch it burn now Oh, I've been so naive to your nonsense Ignoring my own conscience for your love Shit, why is that pulled up to 12? Sheesh. Radio embrace. You don't love me. You only, you only love to break my heart. She's one of the best singers I've worked with, for sure. That is no cap. So, Michaela, if you watch this, they love you, too. Um, but, yeah, so we're working on this song. This song is going to be uh, some, something we're trying to sync. Um, this is a full original. I did the production on this. I did the recording on this. And now I'm going to be doing the mixing on this. So we're going to do this live, though. I'm going to mix this live. So definitely, definitely, definitely tune into that. But I love this beat because it's so it's so open, but it still gives her so much like it still gives you enough emotion. I got creative instead of using hi hats I use these Yeah, so my bad, Jaylee. I didn't answer your question until just now. Um, for anything that you want to do, like a the altar boy with, definitely what he said. The vocal bender is fire. And the cool thing about vocal bender is you could do this flattened thing where it keeps it on one note. So like, say I like wanted 
uh, the note to stay da 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 completely flat because sometimes if you do like a low pitch and like the person's like I've been at it for a minute now like they're changing their freaking voice a lot that won't sound good so if you set it on that flatten it'll be like I've been at it for a minute now like it sets it way more dope like honestly so you can do that you can automate these just like with um Echo Boy uh Alter Boy <laughs> excuse me sorry guys but down um but there's also if I'm not mistaken if I'm not mistaken in here infinity base maybe i just didn't install it hold on let's double check guys uh, slate all right i always tell people my favorite spot if i'm using analog gear is no higher than negative five because that's like super loud but negative eight negative eight is a great realm uh, but now if you're, uh, sorry, I'm trying to remember if this is going to log me right in or not. You bastard. All right. Um, but if you're not recording with analog gear, go a little bit lower, go like negative 10, negative 11, and then boost it with your plugins or whatever later on, uh, because it will definitely give you a better sound. You don't want to record too hot. <sighs> Hold on guys. Let me. Switch this out. I don't want you guys seeing all my information. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Can't do that. Can't do that. Mm -mm. Can't have you guys hacking into my shit. You know? <laughs> so what's the big difference between mixing female vocals and males? So females... Uh, there's a... a, a I don't know. There's like a lot of different. Sorry. Um, there's a lot of different characteristics to their vocal um, where a guy typically is like more lower or mid tone where girls, they have a little bit more range most of the time. So you end up um, you end up really, really, really like having to use all these different uh you might not want to chop out as much. You might not want to. You might want to be more careful with their vocals. Where a guy's vocal, like you can kind of typically be like, oh, he's a bassy vocal. I can go ahead and cut this here and cut this here, and it sounds pretty good. Um, the other thing is nasaliness, and their their uh, when you're recording their vocals, like you want to make sure you're getting that character out of them. Females, they can sing a, a note and it sounds pretty, but it doesn't mean they're putting the character into it. it doesn't mean they're putting the emotion into it. Um, meta pitch that's what it is i have to install that so let's go ahead and do that so i'm gonna update some things too because there's a few things i guess i need to update too Ooh, what else do i have installed everything else okay so key to heart update we're just gonna go ahead and update these real quick while we're doing this but yeah, the new Slate Meta Pitch also does the same thing as Vocal Bender and Alter Boy. So I'm going to download it so we can test it out. But yeah, so when you're recording a female vocal, let me show you guys real quick. So there is a lot um, to this session, a lot. Um, we have, I mean, you guys want to see the recording tracks? We have 132 recording tracks. So like I'm talking... Sometimes we spent 15, 20 minutes on one take for one area. Um, and I mean, these are all, look at all this. All those are different vocals. So we spent a lot of time on all this stuff. There's over 100 different takes. Now, when I get done with the recording session and we're fully decided on all the audio we're keeping, then I make those disappear from the session so I don't have to worry about them. Like this. All right, so. Let's go into a couple things. So first thing you can see is I did have these compressed. I was running this through a Neve. So this was recorded on a $10,000 mic. And as you guys can see, there's really not much processing on her at all. I mean, if I go up to the lead vocal bus, there's even here, really not much. It's Soothe, an EQ, and another EQ. Oh, wait, no, that's not the lead. Sorry. Soothe, EQ, and another EQ, same thing. <laughs> and a multi-band compressor. So let me see. I'm just cutting out some harshness there. 
barely boost. See, look at those tiny little boosts that this is doing. This is what happens when you record with a $10,000 mic. Uh, again, boosting a little bit in the low end because I wanted this part to have more of that lower fill. I've been so naive to your nonsense Ignoring my own conscience for your love I've been so naive to your nonsense Ignoring my own conscience for your love So exhausted, your love is catastrophic Feel like you love to watch me self-destruct You know just how to keep me wherever you want me Tell me that it's love that is straight to my face You take so much and I end up saying I'm sorry Always break my heart so I crave your embrace You take so much and I end up saying I'm sorry Always break my heart You take so much and I end up saying I'm sorry Always breaking my heart so I crave your embrace You take so much so Is my stream tripping guys? Because my internet has been tripping out lately Mm. Yeah, see, Bryce Allen says I record at negative ten with my eleven seventy six and boost it later. So, yeah, that's typically like the, the the sweet spot is like negative eight, negative ten. Um, I, like I said, if it hits negative five, I'm like, okay, sure, I'm accepting that. Um, I didn't mean to stop stream. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh. I, I mean, I'm not trying to hit zero or negative one or negative two. I'm just trying to keep it tame. Let me see, though. Sorry, I'm just trying to read some comments over here. Appreciate the tip. How do most mixing engineers get that dry up front vocal without reverb? I try it on my vocals, and it always sounds like ass. Um, Honestly, it's more of just like you might not hear a lot of reverb, but it, it might be some reverb. But at the same time, there's also a slap delay thing. So if you have like a vocal like this, right? So much and I end up saying I'm sorry. So this vocal, I have a slap delay on her. And I have I'll turn down the reverb completely. You take so much and I end up saying I'm sorry. Always break my heart so I crave your embrace. You take so much and I end up saying I'm sorry. So really what that's about is carving the instruments around that vocal so it sounds up front um, because you don't want everything competing with one another. This is still a recording session. This isn't even the mixing session. That's why you guys don't see a lot. I don't have even gone through and labeled all these yet because we were still in the process of recording this when we took a break. So th this is still looking like a puzzle piece. Like my mixing sessions, as you guys, if, if you guys have been on here, you guys would know, these gray muted vocals do not stay. As soon as it gets into a mixing session, I don't have none of this stuff. I have these organized, named, and all that. So, um, when you're, when you're doing like a dry vocal slap delay is like sometimes your best friend doing like an eighth note, kind of like subtle delay behind it. I'm realizing you dropped my name through the dirt, yeah, to find my heart, then watched it burn down. Oh, I've been so naive to your nonsense, ignoring my own conscience for See, even right there, I'll turn it on and off. I'll turn that slap delay on and off, and you'll feel it kind of pop it up a little bit further. I'm realizing you drug my name through the dirt. I've been so naive to your nonsense, ignoring my own conscience for your love. So exhausted, your love is catastrophic. Feel like you love to watch me self destruct. So with just even a slap delay, it sounds a little bit more up front in your face. Um, and this type of song, I would actually kind of automate the reverb quite a bit more. Um, I'd probably do stuff like this. Been so naive to your nonsense, ignoring my own conscience for your love. So exhausted, your love is catastrophic. Feel like you love to watch me self-destruct. Oh. 
So that way it's not constantly high. It's high when she hits that higher energy. I can also um, put like a gate or something on it to make it do that too. Um, but Or a compressor. You know, you can compress it and let it expand. Um, but that's what I would typically do on that. <clears throat> Damn, the tracks on that mix sound really good. Pretty cool. It's all about sound choice, man, and about placement. So when we did our recording, we made sure that all the harmonies were really, really, really thought out. So we have doubles and harmonies right here. So you have Ready, I'll Play You. So this is our lead by itself. Give me wherever you want me. And then we have a double, I think. Give me wherever you I know, that's what, this first one's a harmony. Let me pull these all in mute. Give me wherever you want me. Give me where. So we did two of those. Give me wherever you want me. Give me wherever you want me. And then we did two of these. Give me where. And then we added, and then we added this. Give me wherever you want me. And then one more of these. Give me wherever you want me. And then you add these little high ones back in, or these mid ones back in. Give me wherever you want me. And then add back in the lead note. Give me wherever you want me. And I'm saying I'm sorry. And yes, this was recorded on. Let me show you guys what this was recorded on. So, Easy. So, this is what I recorded this song on. It was a Neve Shelford. And on the Neve Shelford, you have your preamp. Okay. So, you have your preamp, your EQ, compression, and then you have your. Uh, silk which is like saturation so you have red and blue silk uh so this had some saturation on it this had some eq on it this had some uh compression on it and it was also recorded on a sony mic on the sony c energy but this was done at the big studio and then for even like these parts right here we did this really cool don't love me you only, you only love to break my heart. You don't love me. That's like one of my, that's like one of my favorite parts of the song right there. Is that right there? Because when you get all these harmonies all together, you don't love me. Sheesh, that girl took you really to church with that one. You don't love me. And she's a white girl. You don't love me. You uh if you're in Florida, you can just hit me on my Instagram. We can set up a session at the at the studio. Thank you. Appreciate it. You don't, you don't love me. You you, you don't love me. You only, you only love to break my heart. You don't love me. You only, you only love to break my heart. that become really
Oh, my talking is quiet? Here, hold up. You guys got to tell me that. I turned it down for dread, so there you go. Should be better now. Now, definitely let me know. Let me know if you guys can't hear me properly for sure. I just had to turn up the input because I, I forgot that I had to turn that down for my artist. Uh, you guys can go on engineers.com. I will send you guys my link. Uh, actually, I think it's in the in information on this one. So if you go to the info or you can uh, inbox me on Instagram and I'll tell you how to send me the files and then we can go over the payment information and all that stuff like that. I mean, honestly, the thing about mics to answer this, uh, like the thing about microphones is it's really, really, really dependent on the artist's vocals because don't get me wrong. Like, yes, this is the $10,000 microphone that I was using for this one. Right. But is that amazing for everybody's vocals? No, I've actually heard people on the, on the Sony that sound like shit and I didn't like how they sounded. So I switched out the mic. Um, but for me, I always tell people this, <clears throat> you can't go wrong with AKG C214. That's about $600 or $500, something like that. Even this guy right here is not too bad for most people's vocals. Um, this is $300 right here. This is just a typical broadcast microphone. It's a SM7B, but it sounds really clean, and you don't have to worry about too much room noise because it's a low impedance mic, so meaning it's not going to pick up as much volume as a cardioid regular like a U87 or the AKG, uh, AKG C214 or even an Aventone CV12. These are all cheaper microphones, even a Slate vms microphone um these are all microphones that i recommend to people because one they're under a thousand dollars two they have really good sounds to them and they last a while and three they're not like brittle and really sensitive they actually can handle a lot <clears throat> but also when you get the sm7b i don't have it right now because i just i just cranked my preamp but um, I'm going to be getting it cause I've been like, man, I need to get it. But, uh, cloud lifter, make sure you get a cloud lifter for your SM7B. It'll sound the best that way. Yeah. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Like the Mojave, Mojave's are good mics. Mojave sound clean. Is that the little black one or is that the, um, is that the, I'm trying to remember MA3000. I'm trying to remember or 300. Is it 300 or 3000? 300 okay so let me see mojave yeah yeah that's the silver one okay okay yes yeah, that's the smaller one yeah these aren't bad at all i mean you're looking at a 1500 microphone that those sound really good i yeah so the black one is what i'm used to seeing that one you got the silver version or do you have the black version Oh, I love the 160, bro. TLM 102, trash. This is the worst microphone, okay? That's This is the mic that my friend uses that I was mixing yesterday, and I was telling everybody, like, I hate this microphone. If you're going to get a TLM, go with the 103. Like, if you're going to get one of these, go with this guy. The tiny diaphragm on, see, large diaphragm. You want the, you want the large diaphragm. This one is, it's not really, this thing is like literally this big and it sounds like crap. It, it literally, I hate that microphone. Um, this guy is way better. If you're going to spend the money, you might as well get this. Um, and if you don't have the money for that, you can go with this. This guy right here, 800 bucks, and it comes with emulations of other microphones. So you can have a 251, you can have a 67 uh, SM7B, you can have another uh, 261 or something like that, uh, Sony C800G. So, yeah, or 269, not 261, 269. So you can get, and then you can also buy other packs, but these things sound amazing. Don't get me wrong, it's not the same as a 251, but it sounds similar, very similar. C120. Is that the hold on? No. Oh. 
You're talking about that. They don't even have it on Sweetwater. Because you're talking about the old school, huh? Oh, P120, you mean? Not the C120. Because the C214, this is what I recommend. If you're going to get a mic that's under $1,000, this guy is good. He sounds really good. And guys, look. This is the diaphragm. If you look inside of it, see that circle in there? That circle is the capsule. That's the part that you don't want people being really harsh and direct with. Just because the diaphragm's in front of them doesn't mean... So you could have somebody up here and they're going to be catching the top part of the, the capsule. If you have them down here, they're going to be catching the bottom part of the capsule. But my point is, you have to be smart about where you're placing your microphone. You can use a flashlight to see it. But this guy right here, hell no. I hate this microphone. Or the C12R VR. Oh, I thought you were talking about this guy. I was going to say, if you want something like this, if you want something like this, you can get this. Okay? So this guy comes with, what is the difference on this one? Oh, Black Lion Audio customized this one. That's cool. Okay, so this microphone, I love it. It's so cheap, but it sounds amazing. So it's the same thing as a, it's literally the same exact type of microphone. Um, this one has a power supply, shock mount, suspension. So ready? This one, you have to plug into a box. And this is amongst the list of top tier cheap microphones, okay? Um, but you get a box with this one that you plug it into. And this box right here powers the tube inside of it. So you have an actual tube microphone. So this cable goes from the microphone into the box. And then your regular mic cable goes from the box into your interface or into your preamp. Oh, yeah, yeah, the pencil trick is definitely a fucking helpful thing, bro. Hell yes. Get a rubber band. Get a pencil. Put that bitch on it. I used to do it all the time. People are like, what the hell are you doing, bro? I'm like, listen, you are super essy. You are super harsh right now. So I'll put that pencil right over it or a pen and just let it, boom, do its job. Split those S's because it's splitting the air. That is definitely a good point. Um, let's see. I got that 414. Yeah, the 414 is nice. Don't get me wrong. That's just more expensive. That's on the high-end detail. There's a pen. Okay, I, I got one, but still didn't. What, an interface for two four, the C214? Um, I mean, honestly, you can go with any interface as long as it's not no $200 interface that's from Focusrite. Yeah, the uh, Loughton Audio, bro, they are so good. I mean, I've only heard a couple things, like, um, anything from their, like, low P system. Like, I've heard this mic. I've heard this mic. I've heard a lot of their higher-end mics. Um, but even even uh, stuff like this I've heard is amazing. Like, even this guy I've heard is so fucking amazing sounding. Um so it's just really about like really guys trying it out or trying to find something that can show you that source um, and trying to remember it depends on the vocalist too. You know, if, if I'm going to say this mic sounds good on everybody and then a person with a super, super bassy voice comes in and the mic doesn't pick up bass very well, then it's not going to sound good on everybody. But yeah, these guys right here, not bad at all. 750 for this guy. Let's see. Let's read some information about this guy. Let's see. What's the info? Wow. So you can switch between vintage warmth and modern clarity with the flip of a switch on this guy. That's fucking cool. Let's 
What? Cool. Yeah, now this thing's pretty cool for 750. That's a good mic to go. Or 600 if you just get the mic. And it's a tube mic, so you got to plug into that. See how that has different prongs? That's how you can tell it's a tube mic. It has five prongs versus three. I would definitely go SSL. If you're going to get anything cheap, go with the better brand. The better brand definitely has a better interface. But don't sleep on these guys. Okay? Do not sleep on these guys right here. Most people don't understand that this company right here, Motu, used to be a beast company. But then people started, they were one of the first people to have like a real digital interface with like digital meters and all that stuff. But then UAD kind of shitted on everybody. But you can go with the M6 or the M4, like whatever. Like these are amazing sounding interfaces. I know somebody personally with one. So for 279 or 270, you can have two inputs, and on the back you got <clears throat> you got a monitor and line out. So you got line out. So if you wanted to do, uh, oh, and you got line in three and four. So if you wanted to do some processing to go into a stereo compressor and back in, you could do it on this. So you have a line three and four and a line in three and four. So that's four inputs, four outputs. You're good. That's super dope. But interfaces are a dime a dozen, guys. Like, you can buy four interfaces that are all different price. And it, as long as they have good converters, they're going to do the same job. You really want to worry about your monitoring. You really want to worry about your converters for your monitoring and for your input. Those are the things that you really should care about. But all right, guys, we've been on this thing for three, almost three and a half hours. So I'm going to hop off here. I might hop back on later. I don't know. We might hop on another mix or something. But uh, this stream was super fun. We did a recording session. We broke down some of this production that I did right here and some of the layers and stuff like that. Answered a lot of questions about what you guys wanted to know. So I feel like this was a great stream today, guys. Thank you, everybody, for the 15 likes. If you did not hit like yet, before we end the stream, hit that like button. Make sure you hit it, please. If you have not subscribed yet, make sure you go hit that subscribe button, too, because more is coming. We're going to be doing competitions. Tomorrow, we are going live at 3 p.m., all right? Uh, I want to make sure. No, not tomorrow at 3 p.m. Tomorrow, we're going live at 7 p.m., sorry. Tomorrow, we're going live at 7 p.m., uh, to do a live mix review. So anybody that wants to send in their songs to be reviewed from production or full songs, if you want me to review the mix, give some feedback, and also you know be able to listen to it and show it on, on air, definitely email that over, dynastyonthemix at gmail.com. Um, and tomorrow it's going to be live. So it's going to be 7 p.m. We're going to do it first thing. I'm going to chill here for about 15 minutes, going to roll up some blunts, talk with you guys, and then we're going to get right in. So make sure you guys send out those mixes um, so that I can hear them. It could be your most favorite mix. It could be your most recent mix. It could be a song that you thought you'd, you know, maybe you need improvement on or whatever. Whatever you guys want it to be, go ahead and just send it. Um, I'm going to send you guys, here, I'm going to put it right up here in the chat for you guys. Send it to dynastyonthemix at gmail.com. All right, send all of your submissions to there, all right? And then, hey, thank you so much for tuning in from the Netherlands, man. Shout out Global Network for real, for real. We had Africa in the building. We had France in the building. We had Netherlands in the building. Shit, hell yeah. I'm loving it, guys. I'm loving it. I love the community that we're building here, guys. Keep tuning in. Like I said, we're gonna be doing giveaways soon and everything. Like I'm trying. Once I get to a thousand subscribers, guys. Once we get to a thousand subscribers, we got like 700 or 650 to go. So once we get to a thousand subscribers, we're gonna do a giveaway. Like I said, I might give away a microphone. I might give away a keyboard. I don't know. We're gonna figure it out. But we'll figure something out from there. So appreciate you guys. I'm signing out. You guys have yourselves a great night. If you do see me back on live later. 
just come chat with me. Well, I'm probably just going to be mixing, if anything. But appreciate you guys. Again, love y'all. Peace.